on this example, we are going to factor first, which is what we have down here. Okay. And what is unique about this one is that when fact there's a common factor of x minus 3, which will cancel out. Okay, now it's still technically part of the function, uh, but what will happen here when you have a common factor is uh, a whole will exist, which is something that is new. So uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, but to find all the other information in the seven steps that we are going to do, uh, we will utilize this simplified version. Okay, so the simplified version is the one that is down here. All right, uh, so we can start by uh, first finding uh, the y-intercept if we so desire. All right, the y-intercept we will find by plugging in 0 for x. So if we plug in 0 for x, we will end up with 0 plus 3 over 0 plus 1. So we'll have a y-intercept of 3. So we can put a point at 0, 3. Again, we're going to use the simplified version to do that. Any questions there? Okay. All right. Uh, from there, uh, we can then move on to our third step, which is setting the numerator equal to zero, and that will allow us to find the. No. The x intercepts. Okay? So the x intercept, again, we're going to use the simplified version for that, so we will set the numerator of that equal to zero, so that'll be x plus 3 equals zero which will give us x equals negative 3. So we will have an x-intercept at negative 3 comma 0. So we can plot that. Our fourth step is to find the vertical asymptote. Again, we are going to use the simplified version for that. And we will set the denominator equal to 0. So we'll set x plus 1 equal to 0. That gives us a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So we can go ahead and that. All right. As far as a, a horizontal or slant asymptote, the degree of the numerator, and you can look at the uh, simplified version for this, the degree of the numerator is 1, the degree of the denominator is 1. So they have the same degree. Uh, it actually really doesn't matter. Uh, uh, which version uh, we look at there in this case. Uh, but basically, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are both equal. Okay? So that means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay? So if the degree of the numerator and the denominator are equal, there will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay? the same, that means that there is a horizontal asymptote at a ratio of the leading coefficients. Yeah. So the leading coefficient of the numerator is 1, and the leading coefficient of the denominator is also 1. Okay. So leading coefficient of both is 1. That means our Horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1. All right. Cool there? Yeah. All right. So uh, from there, now we can uh, talk about the whole. All right. What happens here with the whole is we end up with another restricted value. Uh, but instead of it being a vertical line like a, uh, the vertical asymptote is, it'll just be a gap in the graph. Okay? And the x-coordinate of the whole can be found by what makes this equal to 0. Okay? So the x-coordinate will be what? 3. 
Okay, three is what makes those common factors equal to zero. So as far as the coordinate, x coordinate of the hole is concerned, it will be at three because it again makes the, both those common factors equal to zero. Okay. And then to the y coordinate of the hole, what you will do is take this x value and plug it into the simplified version. Okay. So we will plug it into x plus three over x plus one. So the y coordinate of the whole will be found by plugging three into this. So we will do three plus three over three plus one. That gives us six over four, which can be reduced to three over two, that's 1.5, okay? So the y coordinate of the whole is three over two. So we can plot that point, but it's not a point really, it's an actual hole, all right? So when we graph that, it will look like this. We'll be at three and then one and a half, and we'll put a little hole there, okay? Again, that signifies uh, that it is undefined at that particular value, okay? So now when we go ahead and look at the graph, we can bring that up on our calculator. Uh, what we'll find, if we type that in, again, making sure we put our numerator and denominator in their own set of parentheses. The calculator will not show a hole on the graph. All right, we can kind of see where the vertical asymptote lies. All right, but we do not see the hole. Uh, but if we look at the table, you can see that we have an error at negative one, okay? Which means there's a vertical asymptote there. And we also have an error at three, uh, but that error is signifying that we have a hole there, all right? Uh, we can get a little bit more specific than the graphing calculator and say that the output at 3 is 3 over 2, and that's the y value of, of the whole. All right? Now, we actually have enough points to go ahead and uh, plot that graph, so we can just go ahead and, since we have a point in each section, uh, we can go ahead and form our graph, making sure we skip over the whole, and we are good to go. All right? As far as domain and range are concerned, uh, the restricted values in this case are going, you have to be careful with both the vertical asymptote and the hole. So we can be all reals, uh, but X cannot be what two values? Negative one or three, okay? Uh, if you, I'm fine with you writing it like that. Uh, if you are asked to write an interval notation, uh, that would be a little bit of a longer statement, obviously. Uh, negative infinity to negative one, union with negative one to three, union with three to infinity. Uh, the range, uh, you'll have to be aware of that in terms of the whole as well. Uh, this graph uh, does not cross the horizontal asymptote, so that'll be something else we take into account, but this will be all reals, y cannot be. Looks like if it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote, it won't be what? One. And then it will also not be three over two. 